welcome to this volume of Basic Carburetors and Fuel Systems. In this volume, we're going to be discussing Johnson and Evinrude Type 2 and Type 3 carburetor systems. Now, Johnson and Evinrude from 1968 to 69 all the way up to the later part of 1980s used this same basic platform in all their V4 and V6 outboard engines. It was a very versatile carburetor and with the exception of a few changes such as your Venturi size, your, your jet sizes, and, and uh, the fact that the early models had needle valves versus your fixed orifices on the later models, that basically was the only changes in this carburetor. Now, we're going to start out with the earlier model, which is the kind that used the needle valves. We'll break it down and we'll go ahead and show you how to rebuild it and then we'll go ahead and we'll move on to the kind that was had used the fixed orifices but before we start a few things i'd like to discuss that we discuss in all our videos is, and that is before you begin your project always be sure to have a container handy to put your parts into because as you work on your project you're going to find out that a lot of these parts are not contained in your carburetor kit and should you discard them now later on when you fit when you get ready to complete your project you're going to have parts in here that you're going to need so be sure to keep these uh, all, all your little parts in a container, and not only that, but it, it keeps it in one area so you not have parts scattered all over the workbench. But be sure to keep all your parts in a small container, so should you need a part toward the end of your project, it'll be in, in, in your container, and then when your project's done, you can go ahead and you can discard whatever parts you don't need. So let's go ahead and we'll get started tearing down our Type 2 carburetor. We'll get it re all rebuilt, and then we'll go ahead and we'll start with our Type 3. Let's start by breaking down our carburetor, and what we're going to do is we're going to pull out our needle valves. This is the earlier model Type 2 carburetor. You'll find this a very common carburetor all through 1960, beginning in 1968, 69, uh, early part of the 1970s. It was a very widely used carburetor. We need to remember, like always, be very careful when working because you're working with brass and aluminum, and brass and aluminum parts do tend to strip very easily. These needle valves are quite long, so just a little bit of patience in getting them out. It's always a good thing to remember that you need to completely strip your carburetor down, especially if it's been sitting for a while and it's very dirty because what's going to happen is uh, there's going to be passages in there that are they're going to have dirt and, and, and varnish from the gas in them and you're not going to get it thoroughly clean. So as we move the, remove the needle valves, we're going to find this little, little uh, seat on here that's going to have to be replaced. And uh, I'll show you that in just a minute. Okay, as you can see right here in your needle valve, you have a little nylon threaded um, seat and that's going to have to be replaced, so we might as well just go ahead and take them off right now. And they are qu a quite tight fit. Sometimes they're going to be a little harder to get out, so we're just going to work at this here and get these off. Okay, there's that. Keep your parts all in your container. We'll get this one here off. You're going to want to replace these because you see like that one I just had was real tight. This one was real loose. And this is what, this is what seals. You have double threads. You have the threads inside the carburetor itself that actually threads in the needle valve. And then you have also um, this piece here that actually seals the outside uh, of the carburetor so you don't have air sucking through your needle valves. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll open up our high-speed orifices here and get the little O-rings off from them. Get them cleaned out. This carburetor, right? tell you I feel like it's really gummed up. All right, as we see right here, you got a little little fiber washer on the end right here. You want to take that fiber washer off because that's going to get thrown away later on. You're going to want to replace that fiber washer. And it, as we can see inspecting this, we can see gum on the end of this little screw right here. here. And we can tell that this carburetor is probably pretty well gummed up inside. All right, we'll pull that fiber washer off, like so. Now let's go ahead and we'll pull our base off. There's just four bolts that hold the base, four screws that hold the base on. 
go ahead and remove them. You can usually tell too when you're pulling the carburetor apart by the smell of it. If it smells like it's good old gas, then you can usually tell that uh, you know you're going to have problems. It's going to really need to be clean once you get it apart. Pull our base off, and this is we can see inside this carburetor. You can see down inside there. We can see a lot of varnish deposits here in the in the in the base of the carburetor bowl. And what this is caused by is gas and oil sitting in this carburetor for long periods of time. This is going to have to soak in our cleaner for quite a while to get cleaned out and uh, to break it down. All right, we'll pull our old gasket off. And like always, before we even put anything in the carburetor cleaner at all, we might as well go ahead and make sure we have all this gasket clean. Just take your razor blade and be very careful not to cut yourself and not to dig into the carburetor base itself. Go ahead and clean off any remaining gasket deposits on here. Now, what we can see now is we've got a carburetor here that really the base you can see all that deposit right there that just came out of the carburetor. This is why this carburetor is not functioning right now. During a high speed situation, this carburetor on, on a particular outboard would not function correctly. So we're going to have to take now and let this sit for quite a while on our carburetor cleaner. Let's continue in by stripping down our carburetor. Go ahead and remove your pin that holds in your float. Pull your float out. And we'll get the needle valve out of here. And the next thing we want to do is move our need, remove our needle valve seat. Okay, it takes that out. That's going to be replaced on your needle valve seat. As you can see, there's a little nylon washer that goes on it. That's going to want to be replaced. If you don't remember where some of this stuff is going to go, one thing that's a handy thing to remember is just leave some of these washers and stuff on these bolts and these nuts and the needle valve seats. That way, when it goes back together, you'll know where some of these things go. And uh, another thing that's good to do is always try to write down some of this information because it's uh, some of these things are, are quite lengthy. Uh, they have a lot of parts, and it's hard to remember a lot of times where some of this stuff goes. So it's always a good thing to write yourself down a diagram if you can't remember where a lot of these parts go. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we can take a look over the car and we can see that it is fairly clean. why we have our carburetor cleaning and our cleaning solution before we get ready to take it out and blow it out and everything. Go to your local welding shop and get yourself a welder's tip cleaner or something similar. What you're going to need to do with this is you're going to need to take, before you put your carburetor bowl into your carburetor solution, cleaning solution, you've got high speed jets inside these, inside these two holes right here. And if this carburetor has a lot of oxidation buildup or a lot of varnish buildup, such as what our base did, what you need to do is you need to pass this welder's tip in through the high-speed jets on both sides, opening them up. So that, that way, in case you have anything clogging them up, what it's going to allow you to do, it's going to allow you to speed up the front of the cleaning process because it's going to allow the cleaning solution to get through these passages and to better work on the inside of the carburetor. The only other thing I want to discuss real quick is the difference between our Type 2 and Type 3 carburetors. Now, presently, we're working on a Type 2 uh, OMC carburetor that has adjustable low-speed jets. And the kind I have here in my hand is a fixed carburetor, which has fixed low-speed it has fixed intermediate speed and fixed high speed jets. Now, take a look at this. We're going to zoom up here a little bit closer and take a look and we'll get a better close up shot of these different jets. So should you have this type of a carburetor, it will better assist you in uh, disassembling this carburetor. So take a look at this. 
The OMC Type 2 carburetor has low speed idle adjustment screws on the front of the carburetor, and this carburetor has fixed intermediate and high speed jets. It was found mainly on the Johnson & Evernude 85 through 125 horsepower engines. Now, let's take a look at the OMC Type 3 carburetor. Unlike the Type 2, this carburetor has all fixed jets and was found on all V4 and V6 Johnson & Evernude engines. Our Type 3 carburetor shows us that we have, what we have first of all, is we have on both sides of the carburetor, where our needle valves were on our Type 2 carburetor, we have fixed orifices. And all you have to do on this car, this particular type of carburetor, is remove the screws on each one. And if you look in, look closely, you can see that there's a little O-ring on each one. Then we're going to want to be replaced. Remove the other one. On our other carburetor, see we had on our Type 2, we had adjustable low speed jets. This particular one has fixed jets. There's no adjustment to this carburetor. This is one of the later models. Remove them too. Come over on the size of the carburetor. Remove the intermediate plugs. They also have little fiber washers. And we're going to just very quickly remove them. And that will allow us access to the inside of our carburetor in both the intermediate and low speed ports of our, of our carburetor. The only other thing is, is that the base of the carburetor is the same, the high speed orifices are the same, but this is, this is the difference between a Type 2 and a Type 3 carburetor. Um, the Type 2 carburetor has adjustable low speed jets, and the Type 3 carburetor, the later model carburetor, has a fixed, um, a fixed orifice system. All right, now that we have our carburetor cleaned out, what we're going to do is we're going to ha go ahead and start installing our carburetor kit. Now, for this particular carburetor installation, we're using a Sierra kit. And one thing I like about Sierra is they send along with most of their carburetor kits, especially OMC, they send along a diagram, which is very beneficial in, in helping you put your parts back in your carburetor should you have any questions. Now, we're going to start with putting in our float our needle valve, our needle seat, so we'll open up this little package which contains all our small parts. You need to be careful, there's a little spring in here we don't want to lose. All right, now, we'll put our fiber washer onto our needle valve seat and install it first. And we want to be careful because this is brass and aluminum and brass and aluminum strip very easily and we don't want to strip this, this seat up because then it virtually renders your car very useless. All right, take your float, and in this case, the little spring is already installed on the needle valve, but should it not be, there's just a small spring that just goes into the little slot on the needle valve. And what that in turn does is it slides onto your float. And should you have a problem with the needle valve sticking in the needle seat, when your float drops down, this just allows the float to pull the needle valve off the seat. Now, next thing we want to do is just slide that in very carefully. Take our pin and put our pin in. As you can see, this is quite a quite simple carburetor to overhaul. Now, we want to check our float height. This is a very simple adjustment, and it's done very simply by just looking at your carburetor straight on across the platform. And as, as we look at this platform right here, and if we look at the top, of our carburetor float, we can see that we're set just a little bit low. This one is to be set and adjusted so that it's perfectly parallel with the base of the carburetor. And the, and the easiest way to do that is just to take and set a screwdriver underneath there and just pick it up off the needle valve seat and just slightly bend the float down just a little bit. Check it again. And as you can see, that's that little adjustment we made right there put our carburetor, the top of the, the, the float, in line with the carburetor base. Now, moving right along, we'll go ahead and what we'll do next is we'll complete our, our carburetor base because it'll make it easier uh, to install this so we don't inter interfere with our, our float. So let's go ahead and get out our two high-speed plugs and 
we'll get out our little washers, little fiber washers, and replace them. Put them on, screw them into place, take our little fiber washer off our other one. Like I said earlier, just, you know, if, if you have a question where these parts go, leave these washers on to these parts as you take them off. That way it'll, it'll make it easier putting them back together. Go ahead and screw this one on. And just take a wrench and snug it up. Like so. All right, now what we're going to do now is get our gasket out. And we're going to go ahead and place our new gasket on top, making sure especially that all of our holes line up. That gasket could go on the other way and it could be wrong, so we want to make sure that everything lines up the way it's supposed to before we put our top on. All right, go ahead and install the, the carburetor base and get your four screws out. Install them and we're going to just snug them down and then we tighten them, we're just going to tighten them crossways like you would be torquing down a head or something. And it, it's not necessary, but this is aluminum and it would just keep it from maybe pinching or, or cracking uh, the ends of the bosses of the carburetor because they're not very, there's not much there, to, not much metal there. So we're just going to parallel across the carburetor like so, just snug them up just enough to keep that, just enough to seat that against there and to seal that that gasket. gasket. All right, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install our needle valves. We'll take out our new seats and they are beveled. The beveled end goes inside the port. We're going to go ahead first and insert them in each one of the ports and start by screwing our needle valves down in. You'll probably have to have a screwdriver for this because these things haven't been threaded before and they're going to go in pretty hard. Now run your needle valve all the way to the bottom just till it seats on your jet on the inside of the car ring. You do not want to over tighten once at the uh, needle valve seats because you will bend the needle valve. Just bring it in to the seating position and it's going to be almost all the way down on these carburetors. The threads are going to be almost all the way. You'll probably have about a quarter of an inch of thread sticking out when you're done. And just keep going down. It doesn't seem like you're ever going to get there, but you will. And then when it seats, stop. Don't over tighten. Do the same with the next one. Put your needle valve in, bring it all the way down to the seating position and on this particular carburetor like with almost all of our carburetors after the seating position you want to back the needle valve off one and a quarter to one and a half turns and that is basically uh, as a general rule where you want to start with your needle valve all right both of our needle valves are seated we're going to take now and back off one and a half turns there's one, and there's a half. The same thing with this side. Make sure it's seated in the right place. There's one and a half. Now one and a half may be a little rich, but this is gonna this is gonna basically get you to a point where you're gonna get to be able to get the engine started, and you may want to lean it out just a little bit. All right. The next thing, the final thing we're gonna do is turn the carburetor over on its side. We're gonna take our two intermediate valves and we'll put our little fiber washers on them on each side and snug them down making sure that as you're starting them that you get the thread it's always good to finger to start everything with your fingers because if you it's only going to take a second once you strip them out to ruin the whole thing. Once you stripped out them threads, you, you've got some serious problems, so you want to take your time. All right, snug up each one, and that's 
it. But all you're going to need now while your kit is your carburetor base, your, your carburetor to your intake gasket, and that's it. Now we're going to go ahead now and get this carburetor. It is, this carburetor is basically ready to go ahead and be installed on the outboard engine. Okay, as you can see, the Type 2 and Type 3 OMC carburetors are really a simple carburetor to, to rebuild compared to the, the many others. Um, one thing uh, I want, one point I want to bring out is when you're cleaning your carburetor, after you pull it out of your cleaning solution, take you some air. If you don't have a compressor, go to a garage or someplace that will let you use some air and take an air nozzle and blow all these passages inside these carburetors out so you get any varnish or any dirt that might remain inside there out of the carburetor. Uh, cleaning fluids, you can use anything from a lacquer thinner, which is what I prefer because it, it does a real good job at cleaning off, uh, uh, cleaning out a carburetor and, and eating the varnish. Uh, there's many um, carburetor cleaners you can buy at your auto parts store that's uh, a lacquer based type carburetor or an enzyme type carburetor cleaner, and they work equally as well. So just to recap a few things when you're, when you're rebuilding carburetors, be sure to have a real clean surface to work on so that way your parts, you can keep them uh, all nice and, and, and neat and orderly so you don't lose any parts. Keep your parts in a container. It's very important to keep your parts in a container because some of these parts, as you've seen, are not in our carburetor kits and you're going to have to reuse them. And um, if you lose them parts, then what's going to happen is you're not going to be able to get your carburetor back together and you're probably going to have to replace the whole carburetor. Another thing I'd like to point out is being very careful when you're, when you're working with aluminum and brass. Aluminum and brass strip very easily. If a part won't come out, don't force it. Uh, if it's a brass fitting with a screwdriver slot, that screwdriver slot will, will break or strip very easily. So always be careful when you're working with brass and aluminum to make sure that you don't over tighten. Uh, another thing is, is your carburetor adjustments. When you're adjusting your carburetor, bring your needle valve, if it should have a needle valve, bring your needle valve all the way up to closed position. Don't over tighten it, just a snug position. Most carburetors will run, most engines will run by backing your needle valves out one and a quarter to one and a half turns from the seated position. Usually one and a half turns is a little bit too rich, but anywhere between one and a half to one and a quarter is basically where your engine is going to perform well if that carburetor is, is, is running well. Uh, problems caused by carburetors. What we have here is we have a piston. Take a look at this piston. And as you can see, this piston that was related with this particular cylinder and carburetor was, had been leaned out. The carburetor had leaned out, causing this piston to run dry. The air and the fuel and the, and the gas mixture, gas to oil mixture, was not correct on this uh, particular carburetor. And what happened was that this piston had been running dry in the cylinder. By your carburetor not operating properly, it can cause you a lot of internal damage uh, with your engine. So, uh, in this particular case, the owner should have known he had a problem with the outboard because when he accelerated the engine, it would have stalled or it would have not taken the fuel properly. And if you have a, if you have a, some kind of indication that you have a problem, make sure you get looked at right away because uh, this can lead to very extensive and expensive repair in the long run. Like always with our videos, if you have any problems um, with putting your carburetors together in, in, the, in the following, at the ending of the video, there will be a diagram that will show you the basic layout of your carburetor. Uh, most of our videos where available, they all have diagrams that come along with the carburetors to help you and assist you in putting your carburetor back together. So thank you for watching this video. And we hope that uh, this will better help you understand your outboard engine in the future.